More than 56 million Americans live in areas with a shortage of dental health providers. Some states are now creating a new tier of dentistry called dental therapists in order to try to bridge this gap. Dental therapists are a new level of care in the dental profession that aims to increase the access to care in underserved communities such as rural and low-income areas where there are fewer dentists because the communities are less profitable. Dental therapists can perform routine procedures such as temporary crowns and even extractions. Proponents say that dental therapists are expanding care into communities that need it most. But some, including the American Dental Association, say that it will only end up giving patients inferior care and that things could easily go wrong. Are dental therapists the solution to the country's lack of oral health care, or are they just a way to give poor care to those at risk? We have dentists Dr. Cheyenne Warren and Dr. David Rice both joining us currently via Skype. Thank you both so much Thank for being you. here to talk about an important topic. Now, we've talked a lot recently on this show about certain areas and their lack of medical providers and mid-level providers mm -hmm. in medicine. Now we're talking about it in dentistry. I want to start with you, Dr. Rice. You say there's a downside to this concept of having dental therapists. T tell us why. These are patients with big problems. They have complex needs. And we're talking about serious procedures being performed by people who are seriously undertrained. And that brings you know, serious risks to the table. If you think of it this way, you have a 16, maybe 17 year old son or daughter, and they just get their driver's license. And you have the ability to give them the keys to a car that drives over a thousand miles an hour. You know, is that something you would do? And my guess is the answer is no, because it's, there's risk, there's lots and lots of risk. So that's what we're doing when we hand a dental drill or we hand the forceps to somebody who can take a tooth out who doesn't have a lot of training. There are nerves that can be damaged. There are blood vessels that we could introduce anesthetic into, and there are complications and drug interactions that I really feel like we need the most highly trained professional to be administering that care. Is there a clear definition of the scope of a dental therapist? I, I have no experience with a dental therapist. I've seen a dental Hygienist. I well, see. let me let, let's ask Dr. Yeah, Warren because Dr. you're developing Warren, you're a curriculum. Developing curriculum. Maybe you could share with us the the scope of practice of a dental therapist, so we have a better idea of what they should be practicing and how we can best train them. Yeah. So the scope of practice can vary by legislation, state to state. However, it's commonly um, through CODA they can do all fillings on primary ch children's teeth as well as adult teeth. They can do stainless steel crowns on children's teeth and, and root canals on children's teeth. It's, it's not the same as an adult tooth. They can do, like Dr. Rice said, all extractions for primary or baby teeth and some extractions for adult teeth that would be considered class three mobile with severe periodontal disease and a lot of preventive procedures that we, we do every day. And what level of training then do they need for this and how, how closely do they work with say a supervising dentist? So uh, dental therapists have been practicing in the United States safely for the past 15 years, but only a few years ago, CODA, the Commission on Dental Accreditation that accredits all dental schools, dental hygiene programs, dental education, came out with their set of standards. It's three years, it's extensive. Some of the procedures that they do, I know, are more time than I was able to spend in dental school on the same procedures.